Pepperoni. These ain't pepperoni. Oh my god. All right. So I never coming over my house to play mad. He's not coming over my house to play mad no more. But when you watch to the end, when he said, "Man, people always talk about that black on black crime, man, fuck mad." I'm not worried, man. Oh my god. That's funny. This beard is coming a long, Josh. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Looking in the mirror, man. This joint looking nice. Did you end up going to the barber shop? Yeah, I went like two weeks ago. Oh, I'm man. going. Uh, I'm going again for my birthday, uh, so I can look, you know, good for. Why wow, you trying? You trying try to get COVID nineteen on your birthday? Hey man, man, I, I only got tested twice already. I'm not playing. I won't get tested every two weeks. That's a lot. Hey, bruh. I mean, I don't blame you, man. You, you know. You got responsibilities and whatnot. But for me, though, it's like I'm coming down to the point where, like, my little cousin goes out, like, every other day. She's, like, out partying with people and stuff. So, for me, it's partying, like... Partying, though? Partying. So, it's like... Jeez. I can easily get it for sitting in the house, too. So, it doesn't matter. Good point. Yeah, I mean, that you got you got a grade-A point. You got a point. I, uh, I just can't. Did you, see them, did you see them niggas in... Um, there was somewhere in Maryland, like... Just wild and like packed house, like in a club. Bruh, this ain't no game, son. Do you see D.L. Hughley got it? Nah, I, I'm not hip on the D.L. Hughley news. <laughs> well, I'm not, so, I'm not checking the streets for, oh shit, what's going on with D.L. Hughley? Well, I was on my favorite social media, and just so happened, uh, D.L. Hughley came up on the timeline and he was talking about apparently he must have been at a show and he passed out. <laughs> like he passed oh, out on the show. <laughs> like boom, <laughs> straight out. Well, he went to the doctor. Well, he went to the hospital mm -hmm. and they was checking him for all these things and come to find out he had COVID-19. But the thing was, mm -hmm. he said he didn't have any symptoms. No, um, he didn't have the the chills, the the sweats, the heart, the breathing. He didn't, I mean, he could, the difficulty of breathing. He didn't have that. He didn't have the fever, no nothing. He said he just passed out. I was like, oh my God. That's crazy. Man, that is crazy. Hey man, I'm convinced that we are just months away from a full blown. <laughs> Contagion. Yes. Like this <laughs> shit is just about to be like, I, man, I'm trying I mean, to hold the faith, man, but I can't. I, I, I'm normally the one who be like, man, don't worry, we're gonna breeze through this, give you my all might smile, man. But you know what, Larry, I'm not gonna lie to you. My heart has been heavy these last two weeks. Like, uh, I old co well, you don't know him because he started. Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw the email though. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, Rich. He had the COVID. He, he had a COVID. Well, I, nobody know if he had COVID, so they got to wait for the uh, autopsy. autopsy yeah. But I mean, the nicest dude you could come across, man, just cool dude, and gone, gone. I'm like, bro, what the man? When um when Javon and Jessica told me, I broke down crying. He was he was he was the lead before me. Oh, like, okay. and man, I broke down crying. I broke down crying. Like, seriously, and because I tell people all the time, your co-workers are practically your family members. You probably mm -hmm. spend more time with them than you do your actual family. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. It's some, <laughs> some co-workers I just don't like, period. Some family members. <laughs> some family members. But it's some family members you don't like. Mm -hmm. So, man, I, I was just hurt, man. I, especially with, uh, my, I remember my first day on the job, <laughs> my first day he said hey man it was nice to meet you just to let you know uh we watched your youtube channel before you came on <laughs> mm -hmm. and that, that bit about the chicken wings classic <laughs> 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 like he was just a funny cool dude and i mean and the bad thing about him was well not bad but rich was by himself all the time like he barely like went out and stuff like that like he was just by himself and I feel bad because the last time I talked to him was probably like maybe a month ago, maybe a month ago. Mm -hmm. I just feel bad that I didn't check up on him to say, hey, man, you good? You know, you straight. So it's a little guilt right there for me. And the thing is, I want to go to his funeral, but I don't know how they're going to do the funeral now with COVID-19. I don't even know how that's going to happen. 
Um, it's like limited to like only eight people. See, um, and that's his family right there. That's more than his family. Yeah. So it's, it's a it, good chance I won't be able to go to the funeral. I'm still gonna try to go. I'm gonna ask his mom and his sister if I can come. But man, it's they, just they might have they might have lessened the uh, the rules. But the last time someone um, that I heard of someone dying, the funeral was only like eight people. <laughs> You know, Larry, I'm paranoid about that COVID-19. I just see it waiting, you know, right. the minute I go outside, like, it's standing by the door and just ready to jab me some. But for me, like, I'm weighing the options. It's like, live my life, catch COVID. No, we're staying in the house so I don't catch COVID. Like, I'm, like, it's more and more becoming live my life because it's everyone else is out here, like, doing whatever they want. It's like kind of yeah, yeah. prolonging it. It's not going away. Have you seen New Zealand? Mm-mm. New Zealand is back to living their lives like COVID never happened because the entire the entire nation did what they were supposed to do. Mm. Like no one had it was no reported new cases for over three weeks. They back to shopping, going to schools, live sporting events, everything because they did what they were supposed to do. So are they wearing their mask and everything though too? No, I have to. There's no there's no new cases. See that 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 makes me weary too. Like, I can see them going through that and saying, "Okay, cool, we don't have no new cases or whatever." But, dude, I wouldn't even go nowhere now without a mask. Like, just because I wouldn't even go nowhere without a mask now. But well, people not even wearing a mask, right? That's true. You're out. I went to the restaurant. I went to a restaurant yesterday. Um, saw a dude wearing a mask over his lips, <laughs> just his lips. And nose you know, all out like that's that new lip mask <laughs> I'm like, what's the point what is the point what is the point <laughs> man I, I think now masks are gonna be a norm i think masks are gonna be a norm now like not saying that everybody's gonna do it but every time i step out i'm wearing a mask but you know what i have a problem with because either way with them trying to develop a vaccine, every black person I ask, are you getting a vaccine? No. Now, when they first come out, we not. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. No, well, you're, ne- you're never the first need- one. You, you take the vaccine. <laughs> they need black people to um to join the, the, the test trials. And none of them, like, no one is trying to do that. But let me ask you this. Are they getting paid like a white person I'm, will before the I'm, test trial? Are they getting paid like a white person? I'm pretty sure everyone doing the test trial is going to get the same pay. Like you saw at the beginning, like remember when I was asking, um, would you, they were doing something about giving people COVID for like $4,500. Y'all was like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. $4,500 ain't no money, Larry. $4,500 for two weeks. $4,500? No, that's not no money. For two, and you might not even have any symptoms. Nah, bro, nah. Larry, you're playing with death at that. So you're trying to tell me that $4,500, that's just like when I just watched a video last week of a convicted man, a convicted black man, been in jail for 17 years, and they gave this man $50,000. What? That ain't no money for 17 years of being in this cell? You tripping, tripping. No, I mean, and that's, that is ridiculous. That's crazy. $50,000? We talking about two weeks versus... 17 years. That Larry, but how you, but that's, here's the thing though. Your symptoms, I mean, your body may react. You may die literally two days after taking it. What, what good was that $4,500? 4500 ain't no money, Larry. Not to be no test dummy. I mean, not to I be no test rat. But you realize that that's the amount that they're going to pay people for the vaccine. No, nah, I wouldn't need you to come up with like, you think they won't pay everybody? Oh, here's a hundred thousand dollars. No, okay, I know not a hundred thousand, but you need at least need at least at least to give me thirty thousand. If you can, if you can give the cops rubber bullets and shit like that out of nowhere, then you can give me thirty thousand dollars for to be a patient zero. Like this ain't the government though. That's what you got to realize. The government isn't paying for none of this. Okay, so who's paying for it? The uh, at, like. Pharmaceutical companies is developing a vaccine. And how much money do you think they have, Larry? Seriously, how much money do you think they have? Not more than the government. Gee, okay, Larry, come on now. Sorry. Medicine, the medicine is another expensive thing, though. Look how much. Okay, but I give you the EpiPen, dude. Remember that dude? Remember that dude? He's like when he and that dude was an asshole. <laughs> and how much was he charging people for an EpiPen? 
Actually, I think it is still expensive. No, I'm thinking about the dude who um, hiked up prices for like HIV medicine. Uh, but see, once again, they can do that because they know they have the medicine. Yes, these are billion dollar companies. I right. That. But they also put a lot of money into research and development too. And they got to put a lot of money into advertising um, because a lot of people don't know nothing about these new drugs. Like, if a new drug came out, you wouldn't know nothing about it. I ain't gonna lie, Larry. That's, that's, that's a lot of COVID 19 vaccine. Like, I mean, that'll probably be hype because, you know, the situation. Mm. But I don't know, Larry. 4,500 ain't enough. Can, can we at least make it? Can we at least make it 10,000? Hey, look, I don't make up the numbers. But... <laughs> Come on, Larry. Like, this this whole thing is about to change. COVID-19 is about to change the way we do everything. I'm trying to tell you. Like, now, and, and, and here's the thing. Because I was an EMT, I, I already was washing my hands because there's some people we already know there's some people who don't wash their hands and they go to the bathroom okay yeah, all right cool. so you know there's some nasty people out there but like just at the gas station now i always i always keep hand sanitizer in the car because if i touch the gas pump that was just nasty to me but now now i actually keep gloves in the car like one hand i do the one hand uh glove on one hand off so pump the gas everything with my glove on, bam, bam, toss in the trash, uh, open the door, sanitize before I touch anything in the car, sanitize my hands, boom, boom, good to go. This whole thing is about to change. To be honest, we should have been doing half of this stuff from the get-go, okay? Like, people just being cautious of what they're doing. Like, to me, another thing, if you sneeze in your hand after the age of 10, you have a, <laughs> like, everybody's taught to sneeze in their arm and stuff, but I see grown people sneeze in their hand. Grown people. That's because I know, and I probably know, like, the type of people you're talking about. Man, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, like, that's wild. I, I, I really see COVID-19, like, now, it's already changing the way we do stuff. Like, I, I drove down to Old Town the other day because there's always this guy in Old Town who has this old car collection that he likes bringing out on nice days or whatever. Went through Old Town? I mean, a zillion people out there. No social distancing, no six feet. Like, it was wild. And I, I get your point how people stand still, like, want to live their life you like don't uh, because what we're going to stay in the house all our life okay i get that i get that but i i just can't see me going back to a way like when we talked about going to um fire pan i can't see us going to fire pan until this situation is handled and i'm talking about when i say handled i'm talking about like a vaccine because at any given point there could be somebody oh i don't have any symptoms but still out there and just doing whatever. I mean, because we don't, like, if you don't have symptoms, you don't know. It's, right, exactly. exactly. Like, if you don't know something is wrong, how are you just going to decide, oh, let me go get tested? Well, once again, there's, and then here's the thing, testing is free. Here, that's the thing. Oh, it's free? Yeah, it's free. Like, so, There's so much information about testing that they don't tell us about. I, I'm going to go negative on that because on the Maryland healthcare uh, site, it is information overload. See, but that's, all right, so, I mean, I understand if you look in the right places, you'll find it. That's like anything. But, like, when I look at the news, which I've been looking at for, like, every day in the last three, four, five weeks, I did see one thing. They were, like, opening up testing centers, uh, drive through testing centers in certain locations. Um, but they'll tell you, like, the week of where it is. Mm. So I know they opened up one in Clinton. And it was, like, the drive through was, like, wild, like, crazy. Then they'll tell you, like, three days later if you got it or not. Okay. So you're saying that you didn't see an abundance of information. Like, now, me, on the opposite hand, Google actually put out a COVID-19 Google search, like, on your home screen. So the minute you hit it, it shows you everything. In fact, hold on, let me see. That's crazy. I'm going to show y'all right here. 
this is what the streets need to know because I don't know. All right, so if y'all can see my well, well, hold on, let me make sure I got nothing crazy going on on my jump. I don't want y'all to see much. <laughs> okay, so if y'all, damn, I don't know if you can see it, but at the top, it's a COVID 19 jump right there. Yeah, you can't see none of that. <laughs> okay, damn it. Uh, hold on, let me. Let me. Ooh, that reflection is ooh, that reflection. Yeah, it just looks like bubble letters. Can't yeah, read. okay. Well, the COVID nineteen app is right there. You hit that, and literally all information. This is all nothing but COVID nineteen information. All of it, it right is, there. Like you got you can get that from the Play Store. Or the, uh, well, no, I, because Google is so bomb. When this when COVID nineteen first thing came up, boom, it was right on my home screen, and um. You, if your location is on, so it knows that I'm in Maryland, of course. So then it uh, puts up the testing sites and all that. So that's how I knew about the testing sites. So I know there's one at PG Hospital that's appointment. And you know what? This is a good time to teach people who don't know. Um, if you don't know, PG Hospital that's uh, like in, is it the one next to the Pepsi Cola thing? I, uh, I think it's Highsville. They actually have testing appointment testing only that's the only way you can show up um you do that i did that you go up you go the nurse calls you asks you about your symptoms you tell her the symptoms uh if you don't have any symptoms just lie about it okay and then you go i went to pg hospital literally it took 10 minutes Drove up, guy hands me some information about how to find my test results, bam, bam. You go around, they got it set up through like a, a parking garage. You go around, the nurses come up, you roll down the window, because you got to have your mask on when you come. You roll down the window, they take you take the mask down, you're not allowed to touch them. They swab your nose, done deal. Put in a thing, test results in like three to five days. They so actually called the, me. Just through the window, they just like stick the joint up your yeah. nose. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, they damn near scratching your brain. I'm telling you that shit right, right. now. Yeah, I, can, like, I can tell from the videos that, that ain't comfortable it, at all. No, it's, now, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, but it's not comfortable. You're absolutely right. Now, Friday, um, I was on the, the COVID-19 uh, website for Maryland again, and so they was doing free testing again at Six Flags. So uh, it was no appointment. You just drive up and you're ready. And I will say this. Let me go ahead and say this. The two testing sites I have got tested for, I want to applaud the good people of Maryland because we were able to get in. Everything was organized. It was no confusion. Everything was right there. Big shout out to y'all. We, uh, you go to, um, like I said, it's S Six Flags, but it's in the parking lot before you get to the main one. So you go there. The lady directed me to the thing. I'm, the thing opened at eight. I was there like at seven twenty. It was already like ten, fifteen cars there. You go up. You have your mask on. Windows kept up. Whole shabam, just like at the other site. You go around, they ask you your name, you gotta put your ID, such such. Done deal. After that, done. It didn't take me no more than 15 minutes. Okay. See, this is the information I need. Like, because I want to do it. And then my friends just told me, like, oh yeah, you can go to CPS, they got you, they all um, do all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I haven't heard anything about it. Lit literally on the news, all I hear about is, you know, dumb stuff 45 doing. Um, you hear about you know, the protests, all that kind of stuff. It seems like they don't really care about COVID no more. And it's like, y'all were talking about this every single day, all, oh, all right. day. Right. And now all of a sudden, it's like gone. But I know it's not gone. We you know it's not gone. It's just... No, it's not gone. And for people that need it, here is the number, and I'm going to put the description. I'm going to put the description in the Maryland gov site you know so people that live in maryland but the phone number so you can go get tested is 301-883-6627 but i'm gonna put it in the description too but but see and now that's completely funny what you were saying because on my end i feel like i've been getting covid19 overload now like i said from the phone you know yeah because it's probably like your app and everything like right so man but i'm i'm convinced i'm gonna get tested like every two weeks like because you I'm, just don't know yeah i mean ain't nothing wrong with that uh, i'm gonna try and get tested too uh before especially before i like go back into the world so yeah. probably i'll see if i can go get tested 
um, tomorrow, Tuesday. That way I get my results by Friday since I'm supposed to be doing something for my B-Day. <laughs> You're literally like, it's my birthday. <laughs> COVID-19 yeah. everywhere. Everybody <laughs> But man, I I definitely feel like uh, Maryland for sure has been a, has been doing a great job. I'm actually man, big ups to Larry Hogan and the rest of like all our healthcare workers because I was impressed, like really impressed. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, I thought we was gonna all be unorganized. Like I was gonna have to wait like an hour to get my results, and ev- I mean not not my results, but an hour in line. Like, but this thing, they were everyone. Everyone was so organized. I'm talking about from beginning to end. To me, getting my test results, it, like everything was organized. And they test everyone in the car. Everyone. So here's the kicker: you can't set up a you can't set an appointment for you and then bring other people in the car. They have to have information of everybody that's going to be in the car. Well, what about the um, what, no? What about the like Six Flags one though? The, the Six Flags one, as long as they're in the car, they'll test you. All right, cool. That was, yeah, because that was appointment-free, so that was fine. But but how does that work in the sense of, like, how do you, what do you fill out? What do they give you to fill out? Okay, Six Flags? Um, so they don't give you anything. So what, uh, what I did at the first test center, I had to give the lady my information. Mm-hmm. Now, at Six Flags, what they do, they make you take your driver's license and hold it up to the window. Because you can't roll your window down until you're about to get tested. Okay. So I just took my driver's license, held it against the window, and, you know, she wrote everything down. Now, I'm taking it of a people in the car. They have to bring their identification. But, of course, kids don't really have one. So I don't know how the kids will do if they don't have, like, a regular ID or a driver's license. Right. So, But I'm pretty sure they probably just take their name down. And uh, because the um, the child yeah, you right know, probably take the same information exactly the exactly. So um, in fact, there was uh, a car three three cars behind me that had like four people in it. Mm. So yeah, but they are you cannot roll down your window until you get to the thing. Um, in fact, when they swab your nose, because I guess people were like, because <laughs> they was going so far up your nose, you are not allowed to put your hands on the people, like, when they swabbing your nose. But the lady was, my, the, both of the ladies I had swab mine, they were perfect. Like, the first lady was like, it's not going to hurt, but it's going to be uncomfortable. And when I tell you that thing is uncomfortable, bro, I mean, it I can is, imagine. oh, my God. I was like, <laughs> you should see me. I was like. It was terrible. It was terrible because you can't touch them, and your natural reaction is to push somebody away. When it, I'm literally sitting there like, oh. it was terrible. What is, what is your problem? Like, it was so bad. It was oh so God. bad. Bro. Oh. I'm gonna call you the COVID correspondent for men ain't shit. Hey man, look, I'm here for everybody. I want everybody to stay safe. Like now, since people protesting too, like you you see the spike that went up. See, Google even gives you a spike and, of like like the numbers. And they also break it down by county and all that. So there was a spike in PG. And we was already the biggest county that had the uh the most numbers. We was already. Well, I mean, we'll probably get it together, hopefully. Before the end of 2020, I want I want us to get it together so I can, like, enjoy 2021. Yeah, because 2020 is a bust at this point. <laughs> it's a bust. I'm trying to tell you, man, you don't understand. I, I mean, I had plans. It was going to be a hot dude summer. But can- <laughs> <laughs> don't ever say that again. Ever. But you know what's crazy? Like, thinking back, like, 2020 was already wild before COVID hit. Already. We're talking about the, the World War Three shit that was going down, like <laughs> when I was kept talking about World War Three, I was like, "So are we really going to war?" <laughs> oh my god! I said I was going to give them the, I was going to give them the, uh, the old, the old switcheroo. I was going to go, but while everybody march, I'm just going to march in place, be the last in the back. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna go, big man. And then you know, that that's a lot to take. And people think war is a man. War is nasty. War is nasty. It, I know everybody think because they play Call of Duty and shit. They ready? You ain't ready. You ain't ready. You ain't ever been to war. I, that's true. I've never been to war. You right? All the same movies we saw. 
<laughs> but I'm trying to tell you, looking at a dead body is something completely different. I bet. Bro, let me tell you, watching the limbs come off, completely different, okay? Oh, Listen, my God. Mm. Introduce this podcast. We uh, This is Men Ain't Shit, episode three. Episode it's your boy, three. Larry. Your boy, Josh. You know how, well, I just look up at the sky, your boy, Josh. <laughs> here we oh, are. man. we here with some interesting topics. Um, The streets need it. And by the way, I'm it. sorry about last week, your boy, Josh. Wow! Wow! Blaming him this 100%. podcast, there'll be a whole new podcast because man is <laughs> out here just straight tripping and lying. Look, I yes, I had some things to do, but Larry is not in the innocence himself, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm innocent. I was waiting for him, you know. But it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. You know. But we hit back to three now. We got y'all, and you know, let's start him off, Josh. You had an interesting topic that you wanted to talk about, and I, uh, you know, I did. It, it was busy now, with the timeline. Uh, now this topic was discussed on Twitter, and for people who have not seen it, it was a young lady who was <laughs> okay. She was talking about uh, making her man's but here at men ain't shit. We don't discriminate, so making their significant others plate. Okay, so I got the video. Okay, hold on. Well, I did have the video, but, but since we was talking about the COVID nineteen thing, you brought up other shit. I brought up other. <laughs> we gonna leave it at this. If the food is prepared, it's gonna be good. Okay, so I'm gonna make my man a plate. He has arms. He has legs. But that is my man. I am going to make him a plate because that's what I like to do. That's how I was raised. On the flip side of that. Ladies, if you are over young man's relative's house and the food is made and you don't get up to make uh, his plate, that's weak as hell to me. Why? Because I want my man's mama, sister, auntie, cousin, whoever to look at me and be like, damn, that's a dope ass shit. Damn, she gonna take care of my brother's son, whoever. What's wrong with y'all? All right, Josh. I'm gonna have to start this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first. I'm getting big pick me vibes right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, now, that's cool. No, who cares what your what your like your significant other's parents think? Like, yes, that's what I was gonna say at the get go. Okay, keep going, keep going. But keep but going. on a very simplistic simplistic standpoint, like honestly, I don't want nobody making my plate. <laughs> like, you don't know what I like. I mean, you might know, honestly, your significant other probably knows what you like, but like, you don't know what I want in that moment because otherwise I'm telling you everything to get on my plate. I might as well just get up and get that shit myself. I might get up, you know, the, the devil legs might be looking hitting this time and I ain't tell her I wanted the devil legs. <laughs> and now I'm mad. I got to get up anyway. Or I might say, hey, go, you know, I want some, I want some turkey, babe. Can you hook me up with some turkey? Turkey look dry when you get up. <laughs> you, don't know pieces, the you don't know what pieces of turkey to pick up. You know, I want the ones and the juice at the bottom. Skip all the that, I'm gonna dump the turkey in the juju that's underneath the you out. But you, you're literally hitting all the spots that oh, yeah. I was saying. Pause it. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, pause, <laughs> pause, pause, pause. All right, all right. But in all the same points, there we go. We hit all the same points. I absolutely agree. First of all, nobody around here is a child, okay? And I understand that's just the thing that, you know, it shows your appreciation, but... She said She said that's how she was raised. That's how she, you know, right. all that and some people are just raised like that. And it's funny now because I think this is that generation where men... If you see a lot of older men, that's all that when at barbecues of their their wives or so they're getting them plates. Me, I'm like you. If you first, if you come to Thanksgiving, you don't know who food slap. You don't. No, if this your first time. You, your first, you don't know who food slap. So no. you can put my aunt Vonda's 
nasty ass yams on my plate. Now I'm sitting there like a goofball because I got the yams and my cousins Wait. all know, man, those are uh, Vonda's name. You gonna eat them shit? <laughs> man, she put it on my plate. Now I look like a goofball. <laughs> or, or you getting judged because you left them on the plate while you got to throw the plate away. And they like, now, now I gotta, now I gotta hit the move. I gotta fold the plate and throw the, the plate. plate. <laughs> put, the, put the napkins on top and the ones. I don't know why I see that you throw away the food. That's what I'm saying. And I'm completely. I do. I don't like nobody making my plate literally because the same points. I, I just like what I like. You may not know what I like, or maybe you do, but at that di- point in different time, yeah, I may not want that. But I have seen men, okay, I have seen men literally stand up with their girl while they're already standing at the buffet thing with them. It's no point. It's no point. And he'll like. No, get that, get that. And I actually see somebody get mad at that girl because they didn't. And he said, man, you know I don't like that. What you doing? See, that's wild. And that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful like, to me. That's disrespectful. Because yeah. at this point, you're already up. So you should have just made your own damn play from the get-go. You, exactly. You already 90% there. <laughs> you <laughs> you telling her what you want. You could have just got your own play. Exactly. You could have just got your own play. Now, I, I understand and then there's a point that I that I don't agree with her too, because she said she wants to show her significant others, parents, brother, whoever, that she's a dope female. Okay, but making a play isn't sh- how you show somebody you're a dope person. You no. know, it could be a whole bunch of other things you can show that you dope. You know what I'm saying? You could beat me in Call of Duty. And that that proves you dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you could, you could beat me in Super Smash. I would think you're pretty dope. But to me, that is, I just don't agree with that. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Was that on camera? Plates out here. That <laughs> like, 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 maybe a you can't get my son, brother, uncle. Like, no. I don't care. Just that that's not my MO. And then sometimes <laughs> like, man, now when my aunt P's get them yams going, I'm making a whole plate. I'm not even eating anything but a whole yam plate. Like and then, but, and then when she asks you, like, oh, you know what you want, and you say, Oh, let me get them yams. She not probably bringing a whole a whole plate of yams back. <laughs> She's gonna bring me like two scoops, like that's not enough. That's not <laughs> so um I and I understand there are some women who are raised like that to make their man's plate and whatever. But to me, I, I'm I'm not for that. I'm not for no, that. You know what I got a problem with though? When she was like, it's weak. Like the judgment that she's putting on other women for not doing it. Yeah. Like yeah. just say that's your thing and like, and like let that be. Don't try to put your judgment on other women. Like oh, you ain't making a plate. You ain't you ain't you know taking care of your man. No. Like chill. Just do do you. <laughs> but you know let the other women do them yeah relax good buddy <laughs> it's exactly. just a plate baby it's just a just plate, a plate. Like, just a it ain't plate. that serious <laughs> <sighs> I, I was when I first saw that I had I had so many like feelings like damn and um, of course, because the first place you got to go after you see that is the comment section, okay? okay. On, on Twitter so, only, though. Like, no, I don't only for about, Twitter, right. Only for yeah, Twitter. I don't hear about comments on other stuff. <laughs> but, but the comments, I was shocked how many dudes still want their girl to make them a plate. Like, I, and I had I had a girl that made my plate for me. Like it, But to me, it's just... Was it like an every time thing, thing or like, you know, just occasionally my, you know... Make a plate. Well, I know some some women who like cook and bring the plate to host bam. And but that's just how they were raised. Like, and I'm not knocking that. That's just how you was raised. Yeah, and for me, that just kind of feel weird. Like that's not yeah, if, it, um, exactly. It feels weird for me. I agree with you. It, so it feels just, very weird. But okay. and I, I'm pretty sure she's probably like a southern belle, you know. Oh, I could be wrong. She could not be a Southern male, but I, I just definitely feel like most of the women who made my plate were from the South, like who were just, you know, <laughs> every time it's like this, make your plate. Now who you're talking to? You ain't gonna get your own shit. Just how she said, he got arms, he got legs. That's what you gonna get here with. <laughs> no, arms just, and legs, why don't you get up and make your own you plate? Make your own damn plate. <laughs> All right. Bro. So, I I was not with that for me. Like that's not for me. For other people, it it could be, you know. So to each their own. So you know, on the flip side, as we talk about getting plates, we gotta talk about the food on the plate, and that takes us to our next topic, where 
a, a thing that I hear a lot, a lot, a lot is men say, I want a woman who can cook. Mm. And <laughs> as my man Steve would say, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, all right, so I know you love to cook. You know, I love to cook. So the thing that I always hit when hit a dude with when he say that is like, what's the point? I know how to cook my own food. But do you think it's important to have you know to be with a woman who knows how to cook? <laughs> no, I do think it's important because it can save you money. It can save you money. Okay, Listen. I do think that. But I do think there is levels. Now I don't need you to make a chef Ramsay plate every time we have dinner. Okay. Oh, no. And but I'm not gonna lie. If a woman is like on that, if my significant other is on that level of Wipe cooking, up. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I have to wipe you up. If you go over, to, just for the record, if you go over and chicks house anybody and she make you a beef Wellington and that joint perfect, <laughs> you got to marry that joint. <laughs> <laughs> you got to marry that joint. Like, but when when people tell me they can't cook. First of all, there's levels to not knowing how to cook. First of all, like we discussed, there's the air fryer, there's the pressure cooker. As long as you can season, you can cook. <laughs> you can throw it in the joke and be no, done. No, no, because not everybody can season, quote unquote, season. <laughs> so, I disagree. I don't think everybody can season correctly. What? Man, I mean, well, no, no, no. I think we're saying the same thing because I'm saying, like, not everyone can season. Like, you know how how often I see like these infomercials and commercials like, yeah, put salt and pepper. Hell no. Nah. You ain't just putting, you ain't putting no salt and pepper on my food and serving it to me. Let's just, let's just put a little basil on time. You know what I'm and saying? And then they, they be like basil. slapping the chicken with the basil. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm brushing the chicken with the thyme that's melted in butter, baby. Like, like, <laughs> what are you doing, fam? Like, come on. Now, here's, I feel like spaghetti is the one thing that everybody should be able to make. I really do. Exactly. So if your girl can't make spaghetti, I I'm questioning some things. Because I feel like spaghetti is super easy. Like, super easy. But the question is, is that stopping you from dating that chick? If she can't make spaghetti? If she can't make spaghetti. If she can't make spaghetti, Larry, she probably can't cook a lot of things. But the thing is, you can make spaghetti. So if you want spaghetti... You can just make spaghetti. Th this is true, but I don't want to cook every night, Larry. That's exhausting. That's well, exhausting. No, 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 because I'm because I'm looking at it from the sense of like y'all just starting something. Eventually, she's probably gonna learn how to cook something. You can't just not know how to cook your whole life because right. then that comes to another point. Like if you just never want to learn, then I got to think about my point. kids in the future. At that point, like that's a very good point. That's a very good point. And I, I definitely think that cooking is something that can be taught. Like, even yeah. if y'all together and you don't know, you know, you can give her a little ghost moment, but instead of the clay, you, you work in the spaghetti joint. You know, you holding the joint, you telling her season, ah, hold that joint. So I definitely think you can teach that. But, okay, so to answer your question, no, I don't think that would stop me. Yeah, I'll be disappointed. Yeah. I'll be disappointed, but it won't stop me. Especially you know, but, if she got, like, other features. Not, not features, but other... We're on the same page with action, everything action. else. Action. Yeah, you know, exactly. Action. Yeah. Because for me, though, like, my go-to move is cooking. So, like... Here we go. With you know, Alfredo. With Alfredo, huh? That's Alfredo, that's your business, though. That, step one, Alfredo. <laughs> steak, salmon. And don't get me started, because I'm, I'm going in there, I'm whipping in the kitchen like a stir-fry. And you know that you're going to do Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <"Ey>, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So, like, so, like, if she can't cook, that might, you know, she's like, oh, damn, damn, this fire. I'm like, yeah, I got you. I got you, baby. I got you. Like, I, I definitely, and see, and I'm more of a grill person than anything. So, cooking in the kitchen, I can do, but it's like, I'm not putting as much effort in the kitchen like I am out on the grill, like for sure. Like you, man. Well, you haven't had the grill food, but there's been people in the office who have had my cook. You know, like when we had the potluck, and I stood out there and when I cooked that pork butt for the crew. Were you there? Then? I don't know. Oh man, that that pork butt was amazing, bruh. Amazing, two of them, big player, two of them. That's how I roll. You know, so. 
it's definitely something that can be taught. I don't think it's going to stop my relationship. It really don't. Oh, hold on. We got to pause the conversation because I need to know. Since you like the grill, do you be wearing flip-flops or not? Yes, sometimes you got to wear flip-flops because I'm not going to put on right, no shoes. All right, all right, you got to wear the flip-flops. you don't got the flip-flops on, I can't trust you. <laughs> you can't trust the grill. In fact, <laughs> if you go to a grill person's house and they're not wearing flip-flops, you can't eat there. You can't. <laughs> if you don't got the grill master fives on, I don't want it. <laughs> you can't eat there. You can't eat there at all. I, I have damn near burned my toes off. <laughs> I didn't drop a piece of charcoal on my foot, son. Oh, I, my God. I never understood stood the correlation, but I just know that they go. Right? They, they go together. They go together. It, oh, my goodness. Man. Right, so, so we both agree that a chicken. Uh, <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Oh no, I, oh, fella. <laughs> we both agree that a that a woman not knowing how to cook when y'all first date is not a problem. No, it's not a problem. And it's not something that you're seeking for. No. I, I mean, and then when dudes tell you that, here's my thing. Can some of them dudes cook? Probably okay. not. I heard some terrible stories about dudes cooking. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of dudes who don't know how to cook. And like, once cool. again, I don't need a full-blown Chef Ramsay, but there's some dudes, man, I, I'm not going to lie to you. This dude uh, on the grill, and he swore up and down that he was the best grill person ever. Went to his crib. He had a cookout. I'm eating chicken. And I'm like, man, this... Because, you know, a real cook can feel the texture of the chicken. Like, I oh, say, man, I, I said, I don't, this don't, this, I don't think this done. Split open that junk, bro. Nothing but pink and blood. Then he tried to tell me, "This how you know. This how you know somebody can't cook." He said, "Oh, the chicken's medium." The chicken is medium, bro. <laughs> chicken has to be one sixty to one sixty five to be USDA compliant for safety. There is no such thing as medium that's, chicken. Chicken is done, and that's it. <laughs> it has to be one sixty one sixty five for me to eat it. That's I don't even care about the USDA what they recommend. Man, that's what I want. And I'm trying to tell you, I don't, it's in the room, but I have one of those Thermaworks uh, food thermometers. Yeah. If I don't see that on your grill, it's a good chance that you're not like a griller, like you say. And you're probably trying to get a sick too. Well, no, well, that's not true because if I cook chicken, I can actually do it without the. I can do it without the thing. You can do it. Man, I can definitely do it. Like hot dogs too. They don't need that. So, but if your hot dogs ain't burnt, then you you ain't with it though. So, I mean, if I don't see you near a burnt glizzy in the in the pan, <laughs> the glizzy. I, I keep saying hot dog. I'm sorry. If it's not. If it's not a burnt glizzy in the pan. I know you ain't real. You ain't working with it. <laughs> yeah, I, but I'm with you. I don't think you have to. I'm a hundred percent with you. A woman not being able to cook is not stopping me from yeah. Dating. It's not going to stop me from dating. It's not. It's not. Care. It's not. Now, like I get what you were saying. Like long, like long term, that might start to be a little annoying because I ain't trying to cook every night. You know what I mean? And but, then think about how much money. Remember when you and I was going to lunch every day? Now yeah. think about you, me, because you know how I go for lunch. I'll eat a damn fifty dollar lunch. <laughs> so think about me eating lunch, and then. If I couldn't cook, buying dinner. Yeah, that's too that's much. That's easily Dang. there. That's too much. It's too much on your pockets and too much on your body. Like, you're not supposed to be eating like that. Yeah, you definitely not. Um, All right, Josh, what's next on the docket? What, what else were we talking about? So, I had something, Larry, and you and I have discussed this plenty of times. Looks versus personality. Okay. All right. Now, you know me. And you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of the looks don't mean crap to me. Like, you could be dead ugly. And I'm not going to lie. You could be dead ugly. But if your personality is banging, Josh will fuck it with you. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm putting in the time and everything. I know some people are not like that. I know looks got to be there for at least a, a lot of people. I know I'm in a small bubble when I say looks don't really mean anything to me. It has to mean something. I, Larry, I'm I'm 100% sure, man, that looks are really not my go-to. I mean, sure, not a... It has to be there. Like, 
like for me, I know you think I go from go for like the super pretty women, like I mean for sure, for sure. But <laughs> for, for sure. <laughs> but for me, personality does matter too, because it, I can see like a like a shorty that's super fine, ten mm-hmm. out of ten, but just the huge, you know, you know, she she ain't the nicest person. And for me, I'm not I'm not going after her. Like I can't I can't deal with that. Or so personality does play a factor in me like potentially trying to talk to someone but at the same time i got i I think that they're beautiful you know what i mean i gotta wake up i yeah i gotta think that they're beautiful like i can't i can't date a girl who i think oh yeah you you just average that no (laughs) i <laughs> so <laughs> not an average chick, huh? Not but not, this is all my perception though. Like true. Like, cause sure, she can be average, but I don't think she's average. You know, and the world the uh, the rest of the world's like, uh, you know, she alright. But for me, I'm like, nah, that woman is beautiful. This is because that's my particular life. You know, that's what I you know, she's appeasing uh, pleasing to me, so but that's just me. I'm not saying you over here talking about, yeah, she could be but ugly, looking like Quasimodo, but she funny. So but she cool, though. So I'll take that. If she can look like Quasimodo, I'll take that. Like, I would take that. Like, I, uh... No, I, I'm not with that. So really? Okay, so, all right, all right, all right, all right. So one, some dude had put on Twitter, if you could spend one night with anybody, who would it be? And right off the bat, I knew who I wanted, Danielle Brooks, who plays Tasty in Orange and New Black. I think she is so bad, so bad. I think she is like beautiful, like oh my goodness. I want. I, that's who I put. And for me, you know, probably be like the typical answer is like Yana, of course. It's Rihanna, bad girl Riri. Um, Riri is bad. Riri is bad. <laughs> Sophia Vergara. Oh my God. I don't care if she's 50 or not. That woman is fine. <laughs> that woman like, is fine. She, she's fine. Um, you know, you know, like the typical answers. It ain't going to be tasty from the orange, orange is the new but man, how it's can not Danielle really Brooks is so bad. It's she, not. Oh my God. She is so bad. She is so bad. I mean, sure. She, she, she has beautiful ways to her. Oh, and that's another thing. Her personality is great. Like, have you seen her like in the behind the scenes joke? She's like, me and her would be so compatible. Like, we'd be so compatible. Hey man, you like it, I love it. You That's like all I got. It, I love it. <laughs> like, and I definitely feel like looks fade. Looks fade. You know, she could be bad right now or for like these first 10, 15 years. But personality that never fades. Never. But just imagine like being being with the girl that you think is ugly and just knowing that she's gonna get uglier over time. That's pretty. Of course, she will get ugly over time. <laughs> you just said looks fade. So if you don't got nothing to start with. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. But now, now, also, I want to tell the audience, like, I don't just go around saying women are ugly. Like, that's not my MO. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, not, I can vouch for that. It's not. It's not. But Larry will say thing. something just like, She's not appeasing on the eyes. <laughs> like well, I would say she's not my type. No, like, that's it. But I don't. I don't generally think people are just just ugly. Like, I think I would say like a oh, woman is like okay, but if she has a bad personality, that's when if you're if you're average and have a bad personality, then you the, ugly to you, me. You ugly. <laughs> Kanye said it best. The prettiest people do the ugliest things. He said it. He, he said it, Larry. He said it. And it's true. It's true. Like, I know, I look, I know y'all look at this beautiful face and think, oh, man, he never had no top ten. I done had some dime pieces in my life, okay? And let me just tell you, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because they want this. They want that. And it's never, it's just about, but this oh, I got to look women good. that aren't high maintenance. So. This is true. This is true. You are absolutely right. I'm not knocking that. I, I definitely just feel like, and then to me, personality stands out more than beauty. 
Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I you could you could see that that person who like you just love to be around and you love to have a great time. That person also can just be your friend. Like you don't have to be in a relationship with them. <laughs> Man. Oh, you know what? I uh, it's just something about a great person out that just Man, it'll send your heart in the overload, bro. Just it just sends your heart in the overload, bro. And I, I feel like looks can't do that. Oh no, looks can send your heart into overload. I have yet to see somebody that go like, "Oh my god, she's so bad." What? Nah, because I've been showing you some women on Instagram, and you was like, "Oh, she's bad." Like, oh, oh she's she bad. bad. Oh, she <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, okay, you said Rihanna. Okay, I do think Rihanna is beautiful. Rih- Rihanna walking into a room, you stopping. You stop like this. Who is that? <laughs> You're not going to be like, no, nah, that's just Rihanna. You like, oh, like, you following her. <laughs> Their eyes are following the whole night. Yeah. Rihanna is bad. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't know the world had a problem until I had always said, out of everybody in Destiny's Child or that has been in Destiny's Child, that's Kelly right. Rowland was the best looking one. Kelly, hands down. Now, and yeah. man, the world has a problem with dark skinned women. I'm not I did not gonna... know this until like a year ago. Cause like just the way you said that, like be, like because Beyonce is bad too. Beyonce is bad, but Kelly bad. Kelly bad. Kelly is bad. Like, Kelly I'm, is I'm, bad. Kelly is bad. She, I, I ain't oh. gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. Kelly. Like, she fine. Yeah. Whoa. Kelly, bad. <laughs> Kelly, man. And, and you I know what's know funny? What? You know what's funny? And I don't want to get canceled. I don't want y'all to put bees in the, you know, in the comments or whatever. And like, all respected Beehive. I love Beyonce. Love, love, Beyonce. love Beyonce. Love, love Beyonce. Beyonce. I do. But Kelly, though, she seemed like she might have a better personality, too, though. What? So we discussed this a long time ago. I definitely feel like. Beyonce has a great personality. I think that it's shadowed by what she has to be in public. You know what I'm saying? Like, she has to be this. Because, I mean, anyway you look at it, Beyonce is, she's a she's an icon for a lot of women. Period. She's I mean, an icon. Just and she is. Icon. She, she's a tremendous artist. She gives a hell of a show. She is. I just don't think we get to see enough of her personality because it's what she has to be in front of the cameras. And she's always in front of the camera. And so. she's always in front of the camera. Can you imagine living your life like that? Like, just think about that. Like, every time like, you go out, I'm... people just da 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 Like, can you imagine that? That's what I said. I would never want to be famous. Like, yeah, I want to be rich, yeah. but I don't ever want to be famous. Yeah, I don't want to be famous either. I, I couldn't do that, like, and a little, I'm, like, a little notoriety. I take a little notoriety, you know, <laughs> like a C, a C, like a C level star. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, like, like little Dicky, like, like little Dicky. <laughs> like, like you, you know who I am, but you don't really care enough to ask exactly, me. Exactly. I want to be like that, and <laughs> I'm for sure. Like I said, like to the Beehive. No, I love Beyonce. She is, she is in my top three female artists. Okay, sir, she's a banger mm-hmm. artist. We might stumble. We might stumble on another topic right here. Okay. Okay. What's that? Who's the other two? Woo! Other two. Okay. Other two artists: Nikki and Rihanna. You still think Nikki is up there? Oh, oh, like since we retired, we taking her out? She's not really retired, but you know, like in my top five, I still got Missy Elliott in that joint. Because I don't really. I mean, you can do that. She's a great songwriter and all that kind of stuff too. But like for Nikki, I kind of lost respect for her after she did that six nine video. Why does everybody keep talking about this six nine video with her? What is the big deal? What is the big deal about this six nine video? How you how you from the streets and you and you out here making songs and stuff with this dude who was snitching? Because this dude is paying her millions of dollars to be on a sound uh, a soundtrack with her. All right, so basically you selling out. Okay, well, Rick Ross was talking about being in the streets too, and he was a correctional officer. <laughs> you can do both. You can do both. What? 
You can't you be work. talking about Port of Miami where you pour in your candy and be a correctional officer. You can't do that. You can do both. You can be a correctional officer and still be in the street. Come on, Larry. You Come on, bro. A correctional officer is basically a police guard. <laughs> a, a, a police guard. A police. How you think the niggas get stuff into the jails? Man, Rick Ross wasn't doing that. <laughs> Y'all put back. Come on, man. Stop it, Larry. Stop it. Come right, on, man. Hey, hey, I'm just saying. All right, whatever. And look, I'm not saying that Nikki's selling out. I'm saying that 6 9 probably was like, hey, you trying to be in this video? Nikki was like, how much? And he probably said a big number. And Nikki was like, bet. But that just puts money over your. That means you just put money over your morals. But he was snitching, not her. But I'm saying, but she won't go out there and work with a dude that's out here snitching? Okay, let me, okay. Okay. Him snitching has what to do with Nikki? Her morals. That's like, all right, all right, all right. giving you three million. (laughs) Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. All right, so you know, you see the world's comment as it is. Mm -hmm. 45 hits you up and says, hey, Josh, Wait, who's 45? 45? You know who 45 is. Trump. Oh, okay, okay. I'm about to say, wait, what? Okay. All right, say 45 asks you, like, hey, Josh, I want you to speak at my campaign rally and, you know, big me up. And I'm going to give you $3 million to do it. And I want you to be the face of Black America supporting me. You down for it? I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to say, Larry. All right. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that for that ass clown. Hell no. Hell no. That's what I'm saying. Your morals. Three million is a lot. Man, Larry, let me tell you something. If Donald Trump comes to me and talk about anything, he gonna get that Denzel gift when I'm just slamming the door in his face. Get out of here. No. <laughs> no, man. I stand no, no. All right, so, so no, something with 45 and 60 are completely different. Well, you know, I guess they're, I mean, of course, they're completely different, but with 6 9 did in the streets, you know, we've always heard snitches. But y'all, y'all should have known he was going to snitch. Look at his hair color. You should have known he was going to snitch. He shouldn't have never had a platform. Yeah, I agree. Like, he shouldn't have never been as big as he was. He should have never, he shouldn't be where he is today um, as far as in the rap community. Yeah, I think he's a, I'm not going to lie to y'all. And I know we're gonna get some six nine here, but he's terrible. <laughs> like he he's terrible. Yeah, a couple he had a couple of things I, back in the day. I can't see. I don't I never really heard of him until he was like, uh what was that song with the Kiki got the whatever that joint was? I, I that's the first time I ever heard him. That's the first time I ever heard him. The he's first probably, time. He's probably singing that shit. I'm I'm trying to tell you, Larry. I don't if it's not on Google Play and it's not like in the top, I'm barely listening to it. Like, now, back in the day when we had the box, <laughs> you know, I was up on shit because, you know, it was the videos. But, like, I'm trying to tell you, like, I couldn't see the whole thing. And it's a lot of, it's a, like, it's a lot of new rappers I like. Like, I like Lil Uzi. I like Lil, I like Lil Uzi. Uzi nice. Lil I like Lil Uzi. And I, it's a lot, like, I guess, did you see the BET nominations or whatever? No. Nah. Well, uh, I think Little Uzi better than the baby. All right, the, the baby. I thought and, you was gonna say. I you was about to say little baby. Little baby, nice out here. Uh, so and I, I just and Little Uzi wasn't nominated for anything, and I think he had, like his last album was actually pretty good. He was spitting on that thing, but once again, I'm sorry we're getting off topic. But I don't. I didn't know who Six Nine was. I don't blame Nikki for doing a song with him because okay. she was trying to get paid. Okay. And if this if this clown is going to pay her millions of dollars to have a verse, why not? And then here's the thing. Nikki wasn't doing the snitching. Nikki was not doing it. was him. It was this dude. But still, she, she she's still working with the dude who out here acting like that, who moving like that. I can't so, respect it. What do you say about the people who work with R. Kelly? Even though it was a different circumstance and he wasn't snitching. Oh, different circumstances. Those niggas are all under the jail now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about it's still people who did who did uh, songs with R. Kelly. Oh yeah, I mean, even like the first after like the first uh, trial and everything like that. I mean, yeah, they should be ashamed of themselves too, and especially because honestly, I think a lot of them who worked with him probably saw 
some of the stuff that was going on. Man, if they stole it. that and, and say shit, that that's to me that's that's crazy. That's fucking yeah. crazy. No, not and, and that's that's criminal actually. Um, but that's a different that's a different situation. Um, because honestly, if you saw something like that and didn't say nothing, you should be in jail with them. Yep, I agree. Man, but, it don't. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men and women to do nothing. You just pulling out Bible verses all of a sudden? Uh, that wasn't a Bible verse. <laughs> <laughs> we get to read that Bible around here. So, <laughs> like, don't, I, I haven't been to church in probably like six years. So, uh, um, but yeah, I, I, I saw that with the whole 6 9 thing. And I'm just kept thinking to myself like, man, everybody is really hating on Nikki for this. So now I mean, let me ask you this. Now let me ask you this. Do you think if he hit up Meg, okay? She huh? She's not doing it. She wouldn't do it? If, Meg if, don't, if, Meg, if 6 9 paid her some good money, you don't think uh, Meg would do it too? Nah, Meg wouldn't need it because, one, she's like, that. she is the hottest new female artist. So she don't really Agreed. need it. Agreed. Whereas Agreed. I see Nikki needs it because she kind of is fading into obscurity like she's not as hot as she was that's and she, true and she's always hearing more about numbers than quality of her music so i think it, i think it's a big difference of why she did it versus why meg would like i don't see why meg would even consider it honestly you, you know what larry since we're talking about meg um i'm not gonna lie to you. i stalk her a lot on instagram and um i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> Meg bad. Meg oh, bad. bad. Meg is bad. And I'm not even talking about her assets. I'm just talking about like her in general. Like she, and she, I feel like she has a great personality. Oh yeah, she probably do. I mean, I, I wish I, I wish I could know in person. I will, I will. <laughs> I'm going to find out. I do. But, no. Nah, I'm going to be honest. Like it was a time where people was hating on her. Like, like, they're saying she wasn't fine. She kind of ugly. I was kind of mad on the time. I'm like, first off, I don't want her ever to feel like what God gave her ain't enough. Because she bad. 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 <laughs> bad, yeah. I mean, bad. Oh, you know how upset I'll be if she like went and got plastic surgery? Because she already bad. Man, oh my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> And she's not even in my weight class. She's not even in my weight class, Larry. You know me. 250 and all. All right, what's the next topic? Because you always you always bring up your damn weight class. <laughs> Gotta have them 250 and up. Oh my Sorry. God. This has been another exciting episode of Men Ain't Shit. I had a good time, Larry. How about you? Nah, I wasn't feeling it. It's like nah. Well, let's do it. Let's tear down this podcast. Build me a whole new podcast. So tearing it down. Start. I just got off the phone. Got a new podcast uh, person. Uh, ready to go. Damn, Larry. Man, no, I, I felt like this one was actually pretty good. No, I think um, this one was pretty informative, especially with that COVID stuff. Because honestly, like I didn't know nothing about it. So all of y'all should pay attention because y'all might not know about it. But since we got our COVID correspondent Josh here, <laughs> I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna put the information in the description so people can who don't know can go ahead and see what's up. Uh, but like I said, the website is very informative, y'all. Like it tells what counties have uh, the numbers of cases, numbers of death, the spikes uh, since this started. It's very informative if you guys. Uh, take a look at it it tells you the symptoms like every it has everything broken down the testing where you can go to get tested every information you need maryland health or the health officials of maryland have made a excellent job putting it on that site like excellent all right but i'm gonna definitely check that out because like i said i want i do want to get tested um i didn't know my options uh, anything like that so thank you josh I'm here for you, brother. I'm here for you. Like, and the thing is, check weekly because um, I, I know they set up the free testing centers weekly. Mm -hmm. So just check the website like every week 
and see what the testing sites were. And they normally have them for two days. Like, like I said, this past week, it was at Six Flags on Wednesday and Friday. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be at Six Flags again because the parking lot is so huge. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be there again, you know? All right. Well, man. So, we'll check that out. This has been a great episode, man. Great episode. Wait till next week. And by the way, your boy's boy about to be celebrating the birthday. So much love to all y'all. COVID-19 birthday, y'all. <laughs> probably, every, probably everybody there might get it. So, you know. Damn! Oh, I mean, everybody be safe. We're going to be safe out there. We're going to take the proper, uh, you know, precautions, six feet apart. I, if you have a party, I'll be on the outside of the gate eating the rib with nobody around me. Like, I'll be eating the mask, put my mask down, eat my rib. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing, throwing the food over the gate. Why are you throwing the food over the gate? Like, here you go. All right, y'all. Here's to another episode of Men Ain't Shit. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, check in next week. Uh, we will be here. You know, even if Josh ain't here, I'll hold it down because you know I got it. Sounds about so. right. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Until next week, y'all. Peace out. Stay frosty. Love y'all. Oh, also... Men ain't shit, but we're trying to get better.